You can adjust that. It's still adjustable. First thing I do though is I change these strings. I'm in. Cool. Yeah, man. Welcome to Guitar Hunter. I'm Jeremy. A couple days ago, if you followed me on Instagram, you saw me find this guitar. This is a freaking monster. This is a PV Falcon made in the U.S. late 80s. Um, and this guitar was found in a dumpster. And then I paid $220 for it. Here's the skinny. Here's the rundown. Before we dig in, make sure you subscribe down below. I'm Jeremy. I'm the Guitar Hunter. I help people find badass guitars and gear that are just awesome and will change your life. So this guitar I'm super excited about. It is tragically, hilariously heavy. It is so heavy. Um, I would bet, I haven't weighed this yet, I bet this is 10 or 11 pounds. It is so heavy. Now, what I really like about this guitar is that this guitar is definitely just perfectly aimed at that late 80s time period. This is when like shreddy guitars were totally in. Everybody wanted cool, fast maple necks. They wanted locking tremolos. Things I really like about this guitar is that this guitar has a locking. This is a proper American-made Kaler. So you can just straight dive bomb this thing, get those spaghetti noodle uh, strings, and then come back to relative tune. Now, this guitar is completely sorry and terrible in a couple ways that we have to fix right away. The first one is all of these coated strings. They truly are terrible. Um, they are black. They are super thumpy. I haven't actually tried it in an amp, so let's try it now. Now, I'm recording. This is my PV Classic 20 mini head. I've got a Celestion 112 cab in front of it. Um, and then SM57 into a Zoom H5. That's recording up here. I have this little fluffy guy uh, on the Zoom so I can record my audio as well because overhead mic has broken. Anyway, here is the guitar itself. Um, I've tried uh, without plugging it in and I can't get this guitar to actually stay in tune. I think these coated strings also are killing any life that these strings have in them. So they all just sound super like dingy and dark and muddy. I don't know what pickups are in here, but I guarantee if I know anything about PV is that PV never does things subtle. They never ship an amp with not enough gain. There's always way more than you asked for and just enough for what you need. Um, so anyway, let's take this thing apart. Let's get it restrung. And uh, let's see, it's been a while. It has been a minute since I have uh, really done a good setup on a guitar with a locking trim. The other complication to this, this neck has too much relief on it, so there's too much of a hump this way. To fix the relief issue, you have to adjust the truss rod. But as you can see, the truss rod is actually underneath the locking nut. So the locking nut has to be off in order for me to adjust the truss rod, which means it's kind of complicated. So uh, it'll be time lapse. I'll bring you along. I'll fix this up and we'll get it restrung. Just a fun, quick video. plug back in we'll try this thing out i'm hoping for shreddy wonderful goodness if not i've got some great strap pickups i can swap into here i bought this guitar to totally just like rock and roll hot rod do whatever i need to do with it uh-oh what happened did i put way too much oh problem okay let's try it first Okay, sounds awful. Wow, famous last words. Maybe I was going too quick. Okay, I 
put too much tension on the truss rod. I was flying blind, but it felt good. Uh, action super low. I might try. This looks like it has a micro tilt. I might try the micro tilt first. Anyway, I'll be. Okay, I'm back. A couple things happened. Um, so Floyd roses can be stressful. So anyway, um, I over tensioned the truss rod that made the strings buzz out. I was only checking when I was tuning it for if they were in tune open and I wasn't paying attention to having too much tension on the neck. I then had to take the tension down to get to the truss rod, which meant I had to loosen up this whole nut assembly and actually move it forward because there's no good way to, um, you can reach the truss rod, but you don't have enough room because of the strings in the way. After that, I realized that the micro tilt was just too far forward, pushing the heel of the neck too far forward into the guitar so that when the neck was very straight, it was hitting up high. All of that uh, led me to where I could either move the bridge up, which I don't want to do. I don't want to mess with the springs or just change the micro tilt. So that's what I did. Brought the micro tilt down, uh, then got it tuned up. And uh, we're as close as uh, I'm going to be uh, here soon. But let's hear how it sounds. bucks i got a pv made in the u.s one of the things that is so cool to me and it shows some of the philosophy of pv now i get pv put their name on everything but what i really like about this check that out okay so on the front of the guitar they put falcon really big and they put pv very small they wanted this to stand on its own and what's super cool is that it totally does what's cool about a guitar like this is that you can get it for so cheap and then the parts are strat enough that you can swap them out with stuff that you do want. So um, for me, like, you know, these, it sounds fine. It sounds very stratty from the 80s. Um, I want to try. Someone's just sent me a set of pickups from Alabama that they hand wired. So I'm super stoked to try those in here. But this is cool. This is, this has to be like the most guitar I've paid for the least money in a while. This is a very cool deal. So thanks for watching. I'm Jeremy. I'm the Guitar Hunter. Go fill the world with music and friendship. Find badass guitars. Pay full price when you need to. If you missed the setup to this story, go follow my Instagram. Uh, it's at Jeremy the Guitar Hunter. And in a story, I took you with me and I bought this. <laughs>